Spain are your 2023 World Cup champions in the women's game, and we're here to talk about it on Kickback, presented by Betway. Julia and Caroline here with you, and if you didn't already hear the news, Spain have defeated England 1-0 in the World Cup final in what was, I believe, to be a very, very good match, a very exciting one. And Julia, I, I just got to throw the ball to you quickly right now, right off the top, because you were a big fan of England. You know, you had the Lionesses winning, which, you know, we both did. And I'm sure the majority of the world did. Uh, so what are your thoughts right now? And how are you mm -hmm. feeling? Oh, gosh. I mean, obviously gutted for this wonderful England team for not being able to pull it through today. But at the same time, they have to be so proud of what mm -hmm. they've accomplished on the world stage. Admits, you know, we talked a little bit about before this tournament, they have injuries to key players, to key leaders on their team. So for them to go all the way to the final and put up the fight that they could was fantastic. So they really did their country proud and should hold their heads high. But honestly, at the end of the day today, it wasn't England's day. Spain played exceptional. I personally think they outplayed England and they really deserve to win out there. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Spain was 100% the better team from the get. Uh, they just took England out of the game. It wasn't England's day, especially after a very convincing win against Australia. Mm -hmm. I expected much more from England. Uh, but yep, yeah, Spain took the wind right out of their sails. And we talk about, you know, these quick, dynamic, short passes that Spain are able to provide for their team and capitalize on. And I think that when you have a team like Spain and they're on their A game, which we've seen many times in this tournament, we also haven't seen the best performances from them either. Mm -hmm. But when they're on their A game and they're able to play these tight passes where you're watching on television, you're like, how the hell did they get out of such yeah. a congested area so magnificently you know this th these are the types of tactics and for example the midfield when Madi, you know this entire tournament today mm -hmm. just such a game-changing type of player for Spain when when you're able to do that especially in the midfield of the game you know took England right out of it frustrated them I thought England's offense was you know you, you didn't see much of them which is something that you know we saw a lot of against Australia so I think the game plan that Spain came out with and capitalized on and executed was perfect and they should have had two goals on that penalty, mm -hmm. but Mary Earps, you know, brick wall, big save, gave England some momentum there for maybe about a five minute stretch, but just not mm -hmm. enough to take down this Spanish side. And we've said this about Spain throughout this World Cup. You know, I personally had the Netherlands beating them in the, was it the quarterfinals or the semifinals at this point? Uh, when they played, yeah. So when they when they ended up beating the Netherlands, I had the Netherlands winning that game. But that mm -hmm. was one of the best games I'm I'm watching from Spain. Again, from the get, they were down the Netherlands' throat, and I felt kind of that same type of tempo today against England. And hard fought World Cup from England, hard fought match. You know, big respect to this team and Vigman in particular. Mm -hmm. But man. What a massive shout out to Spain to win their first ever Women's World Cup. And what an amazing accomplishment for everybody involved. It was absolutely beautiful just to watch them out there today. And I say this just from a pure like football loving perspective. The way that Spain came out today was so admirable. And I just kind of had this feeling in my gut, you know, from five minutes into the match that mm -hmm. Spain was on top today and it would have been extremely difficult for England to come back and break them down because they came out with some fiery energy there today and I think personally they totally eliminated England's midfield. Mm -hmm. I hardly saw anything from Stanway, yep. hardly saw anything from Walsh and those are some pretty key players for England so to see them sort of being eliminated from the picture that would have had to be in Spain's game plan so major kudos to them for whatever they decided to do beforehand going in there getting it done not giving up for the full 90 and again yeah I feel I feel for this England team but this Spanish side I think the word for me is creative they're so creative with how they go about things it's it's entertaining. It's magical to watch. Carmona, she absolutely deserves her goal there. Um, big ups to her. Captain of the team did her job today, and it was enough to, to give them the trophy.
And Carmona, back-to-back game-winning goals. Oh. I mean, she did it against Sweden in, I believe, the 89th minute, yeah. uh, which basically took her team to the final. And here she is scoring a massive goal, the only goal of the game in the World Cup final, which makes her and Iniesta the only Spanish players to score in a World Cup final in the seniors game. So it's just what an amazing accomplishment from Carmona. She's young. I believe she's 23 years old. Mm-hmm. She, she's she got a bright, bright future ahead of her. Uh, you know, the way she can become an offensive threat is such a you know such a skill set in her game I'm very impressed with her but you mentioned the midfield I just kind of want to touch on it once Mm -hmm. again Mm -hmm. as a former midfielder I think a lot of the game is won in the midfield Uh, of course you know defense is very important the attack's very important but when you have a stable midfield like Spain can demonstrate and they did today it's it can be so dangerous whether you're Mm -hmm. denying your opposition or whether you're you're becoming dangerous in the attack and that's something you know from a Canadian perspective where you know we were hoping that the Canadian women's team would go further than they did. That's yeah. where I think Canada didn't utilize their game nearly enough, where they have mm-hmm. players like Jesse Fleming and Julia Grosso, and they were playing too direct. We weren't playing mm-hmm. through the midfield. We were losing the midfield battle. And I think that that's where Spain was extremely strong. It showed, again, but Madi deserves to win, you know, player of the tournament. I think she was incredible. And I'm just looking forward to seeing what Spain does next because mm-hmm. I I think that they have a very bright future. They have a team that looks like they're very, very uh they have very good chemistry together and and I'm excited to see what what they can do from here. And you always know that when Alexia Puteas is coming off the bench so late in the game, uh you've got a pretty good mm-hmm. lineup. You know, you've got a pretty solid team full of talent and I mean I would have loved to see Puteas play a lot more because again two-time Ballon d'Or winner you want to see her on the pitch but it just goes to show you the depth of the Spanish side and the talent and how young they are and, and where they're going to go in the future. Oh my gosh you, you just really said it there Caroline they have an excellent future and I loved that of course I would have liked to see more of Puteas as well but I love that she had the opportunity to still come on and be on the pitch when that final mm. whistle blew because Honestly, again, she she deserves to be on there to have that moment. Coming back from an ACL is not easy. Mm -hmm. And again, doing what she does best, helping her team succeed and thrive. What a moment for her that would have been. But a storyline we've seen this whole tournament as well. And the teams that come out strong fighting and end up getting the wins at the end of it all are the teams that have this feeling of, of chemistry, of connection and that clicked a lot for Spain today, which I am surprised it didn't click as much for England. There was a bit of, I think, panic at times. I think there was also, for me, some questionable substitutions. I, I mean, I trust Serena with my whole life, but everybody has an opinion, right? So, Of course. At the end of the day, though, wow, what, what a tournament it's been. I just can't believe we're sitting here, we're chatting about the winner, and... Oh man, it's been a it's been a time. You bring up Serena Vigman. Do you like that she didn't start Lauren James? Because for those who don't know, Lauren James was out on a red card, and then she had uh, a two to three match ban. So this was her first game back since the Nigeria game uh, for England. So do you like the fact that it's the World Cup final and Lauren James, arguably one of the best players on this English national team, didn't get the start, or do you agree with Vigman? kind of going with the flow of things since Lauren James had to sit out and sticking with, you know, the, that core team. Mm-hmm. I actually didn't mind that Ella Toon started over Lauren James. Personally, I thought Ella Toon was super hot during the mm-hmm. Australia game. And I thought kudos to her to keep bringing this momentum because I thought, honestly, if England came out today, like they played against Australia, I think it would have been maybe a bit of a different game, mm-hmm. but Again, wasn't England's day, but I, I respected the fact that Ella Toon came in during the quarterfinals and the semifinals and did what she needed to get done and actually, you know, made a colossal impact um, on this English team. And Lauren James, a lot of people have to remember, too, she's now been cold. She's been sitting for the last two games, and that's also really hard to... Yep come into that atmosphere and I think people when James was subbed on towards the end they were kind of like well why isn't she doing anything why isn't she doing her usual magic and I'm like guys this is a high pressure high stress moment she's been off two games and now she's going into this match when Spain is playing some of the best the best football they've played this whole tournament 
that's got to be extremely difficult. And playing with some teammates who are tired, maybe a little bit mentally affected. Um, so yeah, I, I personally agreed with you know Wiegmann's decision to to start Ella Tune, but I think some substitutions were left a little bit late too. For example, like I Beth Mead coming in in the eighty or Beth Mead, sorry, she's not even at this tournament. <laughs> Beth England coming in at the eighty seventh minute. I was like that's not a lot of time to to do anything. So I don't know. But then some of the subs she made at half didn't make as much of an impression as I thought they would either. I just think Spain was that good today. Yeah. They were shutting down players. So it is what it is. And they tried their best, right? Yep. No, and I completely agree with you. I, I have the exact same stance on the Lauren James conversation. Ella Toon, the goal she scored against Australia, which was the opening goal of the game, the way she did it, Mm -hmm. the momentum that England gained from that goal, how it was just an absolute rocket. You know, that's a contagious type of energy. And we spoke on our last episode how she also did that in the Euro Cup final against Germany. Mm -hmm. This is a player who can show up to big games and she's proved that. And she has that in her wheelhouse and her skill set. So I always say, don't fix what's not broken. If Mm -hmm. it's working for England, why would Ella Toon now all of a sudden take a seat on the bench because Lauren James is available? And I agree. Like, Lauren's also young. You know, she sat for a couple of games. She's cold. You don't know what kind of pressure she's dealing with internally Mm -hmm. and mentally from that entire situation where, you know, the whole world came down on her. And we both agreed that although her actions have consequences and she should be serving these consequences, she doesn't deserve to be canceled by any means because everyone makes a mistake. And I do think that the heat of the moment just got to her. We've seen it in football before. So I I agree. I think Ella Toon was the right decision. I don't think it comes down to, you know, Wiegmann starting Ella Toon over Lauren James. I think it comes down to Spain outplayed England today. Mm -hmm. And I said this when Spain's on their A game, I'm not sure what team can beat them because they have taken down many, many good teams at this tournament, teams that could have won it all. And they do that through their incredible passing, through their incredible football IQ. You mentioned the word creativity. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of their game. And I think their midfield. So it's just something that England wasn't able to to handle today. And I don't think that comes down to an Ella Toon and a Lauren James. So. No, I completely agree. And England, of course, have exceptional players, but so do Spain. I mean, these players, they all play together in, you know, the WSL or or even in the Spanish League. And it's just like Spain. I don't even know what else to say except that they were a powerhouse today. And it says a lot that they can come in and take down a team as strong as the Lionesses right now who have so much momentum. So yep. again, like there's um there's and you're right, there's almost nothing you can do at this point um when you're going up against a team like like Spain. So it was incredible to watch. Yeah, I'm just pulling up kind of their their round of sixteen. So they they beat Switzerland five one, then they defeated in the quarterfinals, which we mentioned the Netherlands two to one, then they defeated in uh Sweden in the semifinals two one, and here they are beating England. These are top teams. They didn't yes. have an easy knockout stage by any means. Switzerland, I I think, you know, is always a tough team. Could have been a dark horse in this tournament, didn't play out, but they still advanced into the knockout stages. Then you got Netherlands, who were World uh World Cup runners up. In, back in 2019, ended up losing to the U.S. Sweden, who we all know took down Japan and the U.S., and they just, we, we talk about the Sweden curse, or, uh, mm-hmm. are, are they cursed in the World Cup <laughs> because they can't get to that final? I think it's been about 20 years. And England, who just won the Euro Cup. This yeah. is a team that absolutely deserves respect, and there's a lot of people online who are saying, you know, the ref was on Spain's side, and then Spain was cheated, and they were so dirty. Get out of here with that. If you've mm-hmm. watched this entire Women's World Cup, you know that this Spanish side deserves this moment. When they play their A game, there's not many teams that can keep up with them, and they brought that today in the final. If England brought their A game and and Spain didn't, we'd be having a different conversation because I do think Mm -hmm. England, it's not like they're any less talented. It's just the better team on the day won. And I do think overall Spain absolutely deserves this title. Yeah. And whatever team you're on, whoever you cheer for, even if like, you know, for me example, even though I I cheered for the Lionesses today, it doesn't like, it's okay to say that Spain deserved the win. I think so many people are so quick to back themselves up on social media 
like, you know, Caroline and I both posted videos today and the comments are absolutely flooded with things from all oh, the referees. It's like the referees did their job. Like they had nothing to do with the fact that Spain played better today. Like I don't think referee decisions, sometimes they can be pivotal, but like in this case, like it's absolutely fine to say that Spain played well and I don't know, everybody's saying like, oh, they're, they're dirty. They were diving. I'm like, you can say that about every single team. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I mean, to play devil's advocate, to yeah, yeah, to play devil's advocate, I, I'm a big fan of England, but the way they came out against Australia in the first little bit of that game and how hard yeah. they were on Sam Kerr, yeah. you could say the same thing, yeah. right? Like we saw Raffle versus McCabe in the opening game or in, in Australia's, was it Australia's opening game? I, this was a month ago now, but Australia, so, yeah. versus Ireland. The McCabe versus Rasso battle, you know, yeah. was dirty, was aggressive. We loved yeah. it. Like we said, it was like a pay-per-view, right? A free pay-per-view yeah. that we were watching. That's a part of the sport. It's going to happen, right? You, there's, a, there's a picture going out right now of Hermoso, I think, giving Chloe Kelly the finger. Everyone's freaking out. Like, oh, should this have happened? Why didn't the ref see this? Guys, this is football. This happens all the freaking time. Exactly. I'm like, why Dean and Dan literally <laughs> headbutted someone in the middle of the World Cup. Th these things happen, and, yeah. and it, it brings emotion to the game, and it doesn't mean that that's the reason why Spain won. The better team 100% won today, and, exactly. and that's all I have to say. I know people say this phrase in every single sport, but the ball doesn't lie. Like it literally doesn't lie. Spain deserved to win. And I just think that's case closed. End of story. You know, put respect on both of these teams because they're both incredible. But <laughs> that's the storyline of today. And yep. there's nothing wrong with that. And again, people just look for something to blame or an outlet to put their thoughts. And that's okay too. But I would personally, I don't know if this will ever happen. I'm going to be hopeful, but I would personally love to see a bit more constructive empowering conversations around these types of situations but <laughs> yeah it is what it is <laughs> I think that's a little hopeful but yeah yeah well I appreciate you Julia because it takes you know a big person when you're cheering for your team to admit that another team was the better team so I, I'm a, I'm sad for you in the sense that it would have been oh, great no. to see the Lionesses win and England to, you know, hoist their first ever World Cup, especially going back to back with the Euro. But now you think about storylines, you know, England's going to come back for like almost like a revenge tour. We got the Olympics coming up, obviously, you know, it'll be great to see what what England can come up with. And does Vigman stay with them? Does she head to the U.S., which is a big no. rumor? There's so much that could, well, you know, that could happen that I'm excited to see with in, in terms of what can happen with this English side. Totally. And, you know, you're talking about where, where is Serena going to go and U.S. I think that's certainly a possibility. But England also announced this, like a statement because there were so many rumors going around the England FA that she's also a consideration to replace Gareth Southgate as the head of the English men's team eventually. Really? And I have I just got shivers. I was like. Oh my God, I'm here for this moment. So I don't know. I don't know. That is a rumor, but it was officially some tweeted by the FA. So I thought that was very, very interesting. Will it happen? I don't know. I don't know. We don't know anything, of course. And That'd maybe be incredible. it will be freaking sweet. But um, if she stayed with the Lionesses for the Olympics, she could absolutely do that too. And I mean, the Olympics, they're going to have players like Leah Williamson back, Fran Kirby, yeah. hopefully. So and hopefully touch wood, but there won't be any more injuries to any teams. And, and Spain are missing quite a few players as well. And who knows what's going to happen with their management situation. Yes. So next year, I mean, the Olympics are a year away. It's actually not that long. And it's very, very exciting. Well, we got internationals, international games coming up in like, I what, a few weeks? <laughs> yeah, I, I think Canada plays Jamaica in Toronto, something like wow, middle of September. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Are you going to go to that game? Yeah, I'm going to go and report it and very excited. Good for you. Yeah. Oh man, if I was still in if, exciting. if I was still in Toronto, I'd be there with you. Oh, for sure. And I will say if anyone does want to buy tickets, they're almost sold out, which Amazing. I think is sweet because TFC can't even sell out BMO. So the fact that these Canadian women, no hate to TFC, but the fact that these <laughs> Canadian women are coming in and getting it done, I know international is a different level than MLS, but that makes me extremely happy. Amazing. Well, you bring up management for Spain, and we had a video go out on our YouTube channel on the 90th minute 
kind of giving our thoughts on Vilda and the situation that's come out to be with him and just maybe rumors that we've heard within the media and what's being reported. And a lot of people didn't agree with what we were saying, which is fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Uh, here we are now in a situation where Spain win the World Cup, where we know that there was this drama with Vilda and 15 players on the uh, on Spain's senior national team writing letters to the Federation saying that it's been a controlling and toxic environment and they just want change. Uh, I have the exact quote of what the Federation said back to them saying that they need to accept their mistake and ask for forgiveness. Now, that's a very sad response from a federation when you feel like you're standing up for what's right and what you believe in as a player, uh, as a woman, as a human being, right? Mm -hmm. So now we have this situation where Vilda now has won the World Cup with Spain. And here's my stance on it to make it very clear. I think Vilda deserves some credit. He's the manager he picked the squad. He made key contributions to this game today. I think Para Luelo starting, you know, best young player of the tournament. She's been incredible. Uh, I thought that that was very important for Spain today because she just adds this burst of energy. Mm -hmm. She's she's just like a, she's like a like a rocket out there. She's incredible. Yeah. I can't wait to see her future. With that being said, I don't think that Spain's entire success is contributing to Vilda. I think that these players who are immensely talented, who have won Ballon d'Ors, who play for teams like Real Madrid and Barcelona deserve a lot of the credit. And I think that we are now reaching a conversation, which in my opinion is very unfortunate online, where people are villainizing these 15 players who stood up against Vilda and the Federation, instead of maybe trying to understand and have some empathy about what we might not know about the entire situation, because the reality is there might be a lot of success on the pitch, but that doesn't mean that everything is, you know, rainbows and butterflies off the pitch. Mm -hmm. There could be a lot of things happening behind the scenes. And if 15 players, which are some of the best players felt the need to write that letter, there's a lot of things going on. So I'm very curious to see how this unfolds now. Like I said, we don't know what is true, what is not, what is happening what the what the vibe is like in the camp for Spain. But what I will say is villainizing these women uh, is completely wrong. Uh, and I feel for these players who sat at home watching Spain lift the World Cup trophy today because they took a stand for what they believe in. And now, you know, they weren't able to be a part of that World Cup squad. And I hope that there's some change for this women's side because – it's a tough conversation to navigate. Not every single person is going to understand that. But as a former player, it's very important that when you give your entire life, commitment, time, dedication to something, which is the sport of football in this context, it's a, it's a very non-toxic environment where you're treated with respect, where respect is given and earned. And there it's, it's a very comfortable environment that you feel safe in. And if that's not the case and you speak up against it, you should never be tr treated in, in a way where you feel like you have to quote unquote ask for forgiveness. Cause I definitely don't agree with that. So I'm very curious to see what happens with this Vilda situation. People are either team Vilda and you know, the Spanish women's side was complaining too much or are really on, you know, the side of like, let's support the women and see what happens and Vilda out. Yeah, man, it's, it's a very touchy subject. It's very hard to do commentary on. I think from a journalistic perspective, Caroline, I'm sure you can sympathize with this too, because everybody has an opinion. And again, people need to understand they don't know really entirely 100% of what's going on, but when 15 players, some of these massive international players are coming up with very valid concerns in the workplace, like it doesn't matter if you're mm -hmm. a professional athlete or if you work in, I don't know, a hospital or an office, yeah. like it's your workplace. It's, it's the same idea. And no matter who you are, everybody deserves respect and everybody's voice deserves to be heard. And I think that these comments are being brought up. They need to be taken seriously. They need to be taken validly. And at the end of the day also, yeah, it's absolutely okay. Like what Caroline said to say, okay, yes, Vilda did make some good decisions, obviously in his lineups and 
you know, the manager is part of the team to to take them, obviously, to the World Cup trophy. But also, these players went out there and they had something else to fight for, too. They had themselves to fight for. Mm-hmm. They had their country to fight for. They had their beliefs to fight for. And I'm sure the players on the pitch today were fighting for these Spanish athletes who did not come to the yep. tournament. So it's their win, too. And I think that should not be underestimated as well. The power of what something to fight for can do. And I'm not saying England doesn't, but this is a very different situation. England has a very different situation with their manager because they have a very supportive together environment. Now, as for moving forward, I have no clue how this is going to go because like you mentioned, okay, he looked like on paper, Vilda did his job by Mm -hmm. literally winning the World Cup. But there are other things at play here that need to 100% be addressed. It's tough. I I think this situation cannot go on much longer without being addressed, quite honestly, because it doesn't matter that they won the World Cup. These these ladies are not going to let anything slide. And moving forward, they're going to they're going to demand more and I think we're going to see more protests, more comments, more public displays of information if something isn't changed. And I don't think we should be surprised if we see that. But again, who really knows what's going to happen? I mean, we've seen on another note, the president of FIFA makes some interesting comments. So again, (laughs) that it it begs the question. And I know I have the bias of being a woman, of course. So try, but like, how are we going to make change here if comments like that are being said? But I wouldn't even consider it bias because I think as women, you know, and I can speak to being a former athlete and also being in the industry that we're in. Mm -hmm. We come across a lot of situations, a lot of conversations that are completely unacceptable, right? Like we can, we can speak through our experience, right? So when, yeah, you have uh, FIFA's president saying, you know, pick your battles, choose your battles and convince us men or something along those lines, you know, I'm just paraphrasing here. It's, it's insulting because you wouldn't say that necessarily to a Ronaldo or to a Messi, right? And now you're dealing with a situation here with Spain where I just hope that these women aren't villainized at this yeah. point because they achieved something so grand, mm-hmm. so epic in their lifetime. And again, the amount of effort, work, time, commitment, dedication, it's lifelong for them. You know, they've given their mind, body, and soul to this sport, and they've won the biggest trophy that's possible to win. And I just hope that it doesn't get clouded because of what we said on our last episode, Julia, Mm -hmm. which is this drama and this noise that's coming from the Vilda situation and the Federation situation. And there's been a lot of comments on our last YouTube video about, you know, us saying, oh, you know, if Spain win the World Cup, it's because the women are incredible. And if they lose, it's because of Vilda. That's not what we were alluding to. That's not what we were implying. You win as a team, you lose as a team. But what's important to note that is, is if Spain had a difficult time maybe winning this World Cup final, you can't deny that the drama and the noise wouldn't have played a factor into a performance or because that's all anyone's talking about. It's mm-hmm. constantly trending. What's, it, it, you know, it's unfortunate that we're heading into a World Cup, Spain versus England. You know, England can go back to back with the Euro. Spain, I believe this is their third World Cup in their history and they have the potential to win it for the first time ever. And we're talking about Vilda drama. You know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. That's what, that's what we were alluding to. And again, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. This is ours as women. Um, this is mine as a woman who played the sport, who, you know, works in, in the sports industry. I have a very soft spot, especially like a protective place in my heart for the younger generation coming up uh, to be strong in what they believe in. And just because you feel like you may be silenced, not to sit down and, and take a seat and close your mouth. That's why I have a lot of respect for these women who wrote a letter and who are now not at the World Cup and missed out on a dream. Imagine them being back home in Spain, what they're going through right now. But I think it took a lot of strength and courage to stand up for what's right, what you felt in your gut, if you felt disrespected, if you felt like it was a controlling, toxic uh, environment for you to stand up for yourself. I I mean, you know, life is much larger as, as, as as immense as the World Cup is. 
life is much bigger than that. And you can create change through these moments. And I hope to see that now with the Spanish women's side, because if they ever made a statement, it was today. Uh, and now they have the biggest opportunity to make change for their generation and the younger generations. And I really, really hope to see it. If Vilda and all of the drama that the media has kind of been portraying and talking about is true. You mentioned a great point. 15 women wrote a letter. This wasn't one person. And even if it was just one person, but 15 people took a stance. Mm -hmm. So I hope that it's addressed properly. And I don't think that there's a better time to do it. And we'll see what comes out about it, Julia. And I'm excited. Yeah. Who knows? But it's, it's important. It's very important for not just soccer players, footballers. It's important for women. Mm -hmm. So I, I hope men who, who, you know, may not resonate with this conversation and that's totally fine. You know, like, again, you're entitled to your opinion. It, it's important to, to try and empathize with these women who wrote the letter and not villainize them. Yep. I agree. Understand, try to put yourself in people's shoes and educate yourself. And then of course you're entitled to your opinion. 100%. Yeah. Like, you know, we're not, we're not saying anything against anyone here, but even in, in some comments, people are like saying, I don't even know what this situation is, but X, Y, Z, you know? And it's like, well, you probably shouldn't be commenting things if you haven't properly educated yourself on, you know, what's actually happening, of course, but it is what it is. Yeah. I, I, I am very hopeful that something will be addressed because 15 players is nothing that should be avoided and yeah we just look to the future now but again what these players did out there on the pitch today is their own pure talent and and motivation and star power they're incredible yeah and, and to anyone who's saying that these spanish women were complaining that practices are too hard and they're quote unquote whiny babies man you guys don't watch women's football because alexia puteas who's a two-time ballon d'or winner you can't assume that she's afraid of training hard. She's trained her whole life mm -hmm. very hard mm -hmm. to, to achieve accolades like that. So yeah. that's not the situation. If they were complaining about training, maybe there was too much, too much on their bodies, which is mm -hmm. a valid, mm -hmm. valid concern. So people just need to, you know, on all sides, just l let's see how it plays out. You're entitled to your opinion, but I don't think we should be coming at each other for it either. <laughs> I agree. I, I just think it adds to a hostile environment, honestly. 